A couple of years ago, I was in a car with my parents and my little sister of seven years old, and we were going to Germany. You know, Venlo to Germany is just five minutes by car, and when we crossed the border, I showed my sister the border and said, look, this is the border, and uh, we had to stop here years ago for some passport checks or the check of the car. But she couldn't believe me. She was like, I don't see anything. What's a border? So I tried to explain to her, okay, th we have borders, but we can't see, him, see them. And if you cross a border, you're in another country. But yet it was unclear for her. So she um, asked me, and if I look down from the airplane, can I see the borders then? Like a world globe at home. Hmm, try to explain this to a child of seven years old. No, I said. I tried to explain her and I said, um, the people have invented the borders because I couldn't tell her something about sovereignty, etc. And then I showed her uh, the license uh, plates of the cars. Um, I said, look, if you look to a license plate, you can see the origin of the car. If it says NL, it's from the Netherlands. If it says D, it's from Germany. PL for Poland. F from France. And um, A is for Austria. So we started to name all the uh, cars to their origin, and she liked the game. And at the moment, she was like, oh, look, there are trees, and they are like an L, so they're from Luxembourg. My shoes are from Poland, and your mouth is like a D, so it's from Germany. And she started laughing, and she couldn't stop. And then she asked, but why don't people have license plates? Then we could know where they are from. I was shocked. With a little child of seven years old, we were talking about we and they and about foreigners. And from what she tells me, I could understand that she also feels a sort of separation at school. How can I break through this? How can I tell a little child of seven years old that your character is more important than your origin? That it's, that it's more important how you treat people and that you have to love everyone without any difference? And why didn't she ask me something about Roadrunner or about Tom and Jerry? But the question was asked, and I had to answer it. At the moment, I want to explain. Uh, I want to start with an explanation. We drove along. Uh, we drove past the junkyard, and there was my explanation. I asked my sister um, if she could see where the cars were from. No, I can't. No, you can't because all the cars are broken. They're on a pile, and they, ha no, uh, they have no license plates anymore. And the people are the same. At the end, we all will die, and our license plate or our origin will not count anymore. And then it's important if you, were, um, if you loved everyone, and if you look at the character of someone, and if you were nice to other people. Then she looked at me in my eyes, and I saw in her eyes that she had understood me. Talking to children is fascinating. You learn a lot by, uh, by talking with them, and then um, they look to the world in another way we f have forgotten to look. And um, she was right. We don't see any borders. And I couldn't tell her that there are a lot of people on the world who uh, talk to people by thinking about their license plate and not about their character. Let me ask you a question. Okay? I will ask you a question, and at the end, you will understand why I do this. Who in this room knows the taste of chocolate? Please raise your hand. Exactly, everyone. Do you realize that there are a lot of children on Earth never ever tasted chocolate? And do you realize that there are a lot of children on Earth never tasted chocolate and die by crossing those man-made borders, by trying to crossing these borders, or stay behind as an orphan with the sound of guns or bombs engraved in their mind forever. When I was younger, I wrote a lot of poems. And my poems were always about the children in war zones or the children uh, who stay behind as an orphan. And I promised myself to study and to live for those children. And I promised myself to do anything I can for those children. Um, I didn't know how to do this, but I was sure I would find a way. And when I didn't want to go to college or didn't want to do my homework or uh, write my thesis, I remembered my promise and I remembered my purpose on earth again for those children. And when I was writing my master thesis of business administration at the university, I found a way. 
I found a way to learn to teach all children on earth the taste of chocolate. But first, let me tell you something about my thesis. My thesis was about cultural intelligence. And this is a competence of a person to adapt effectively in a new cultural context. And someone with a high cultural intelligence has uh, more self-confidence, and you can improve cultural intelligence by staying a longer time abroad or interacting with uh, people from different cultures and uh, different cultural contexts. Uh, let me give you an example. If we, uh, you know, we have a lot of international uh, organizations, a lot of multinationals, and when a Dutch multinational sent his uh, Dutch um, manager to India for, as an expat for the strategic alliance, uh, the Dutch manager there has to adapt to the situation. He has to know the facial expressions of those people. He has to know uh, the, uh, how to greet people. He has to know uh, um, how, uh, he has, uh, how, what the patterns of behavior are, and the legal system, the economic system, but not only for his own social life, also for his uh, job as a manager, because he has to control the situation and he has to control uh, the uh, situation in the alliance, because He's the one who don't have to stress when there occurs a problem. Um, and let me give another example that will uh, make it easier. In some countries, you can send an email to your boss with, Hi Sarah, read my email, bye. But in another country, it could be your last email, because you can get fired for that email. Because they expect you to email with, Dear Mr. Peterson, would you please read my email if you have some time? Kind regards. The struggle is real and adaptation is difficult. And for multinationals, it's important to have um, people with a high cultural intelligence and they recruit people with high cultural intelligence because they need them to adapt in a new situation. Because they will face every time a new, uh, something new in the culture of that organization where they are. And, um, the, uh, improving this cultural intelligence is important. Why it's important? Because we are living in a global world and we are, we are living in a global village. So every day we face new uh, cultural things and we face new situations we have to adapt and we, sometimes we don't understand but we had to learn from each other. And that's why I uh, had the idea to improve the cultural intelligence of the people by connecting cities worldwide. As a councillor, I know uh, that uh, a city wants, wants to be known everywhere on the world. So they want to be known by the people, they want to be uh, put on a map. And a way to do this is uh, to have um, citizens with a good education or with a high cultural intelligence working in several positions over the world and they can tell the, uh, the story of the city to other people and then you can put your city on the map. But it's also important when you connect with a city, for instance, a city in South Africa or South America, uh, the people there, uh, you can uh, send your uh, citizens to that country to do some refugee, uh, do, to do some um, uh, work there, or you can send your children to that country to do some exchange programs. And then they will learn from each other, and they will learn to think and to look in their eyes, because there's not only the Netherlands, but we live in a whole world with different uh, kinds of behaviors. And the other important thing of this is that the citizens of the city and uh, the children of the city are, uh, the children of today in a city are the uh, leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of the future. And we need leaders who don't think in license plates, but who, th who know the character of a person and look to the character of a person. And by combining these cities, you can also uh, connect the hearts too. Because when you interact with some, uh, something, someone from another part of the world, you will connect your heart, you will know each other, and then you can erase the borders of the heart. Because not only countries or cities have borders, also a heart can have borders. And you can be afraid of something, uh, to t talk to someone, or uh, etc. And when you erase the borders of the heart by connecting the hearts, you can erase the, the uh, borders of the world will erase by itself. And uh, now we are going to um, uh, erase the borders here, but first of all, I know it's uh, difficult. Yeah, I know it's also maybe a topic, and I know you can be scared of opening, uh, opening up all the borders because of the uh, news last weeks. 
and you can be afraid to do this, but don't forget there are more important things in life than being afraid. And, um, and, and a lovely um, example for this is uh, the situation of Alia Izetbego, which is the former president of Bosnia Herzegovina, and I will tell I will tell you something about him, and then it will be clear why we do, do why we have to do this. Uh, you know, in uh, 1992 till 1995, there was a war in Bosnia Herzegovina, and uh, the start uh, the start Sarajevo, the city Sarajevo, the capital city, was being bombed. And uh, at that moment, uh, Alia Izetbego, which the president, was walking on the streets. And at that moment, uh, the borders of the hearts of the people were at, at its uh, highest level, right? And um, then Elia Zedbegovic was walking. Uh, he saw uh, a woman injured, and everyone was searching for shelter because the bombs are coming. And the woman saw the president walking. She was laying on the ground, injured, and she asked, Mr. President, aren't you afraid? Yes, I am. But why are you walking then? She asked. Yes, I'm also afraid, but I have more reasons to go forward than the reasons to be afraid. I have more reasons to go forward than the reasons to be afraid. So we all are maybe afraid to open up the borders, and especially open up the borders of our heart. But don't forget, there are more important reasons to do so for those children. And uh, now we are going to do a cultural uh, intelligence assignment here in this room, and th uh, we are going to start uh, breaking the borders, and we are going to erase the borders of our hearts. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Everyone had a chocolate, right? You didn't eat it? <laughs> take, take a chocolate in both of your hands and hold it. Okay, by one we are going to break the chocolate, right? Three, two, one, and break the chocolate. Okay, we are not going to eat it, uh, we are going to do something else with the chocolate. This was the, this was the uh, easiest step. Okay, F first part of the chocolate is for you. You bring it at home, you uh, put it on the desk or in front of the TV, and every time you see the chocolate, you think about those children in war zones. And the other part is someone, for someone else. It's for someone uh, from who you are afraid or someone with an other cultural level or, cult or a uh, other cultural context. Right? It can be your neighbor, it can be your manager, or it can be your employee, it can be the uh, man who is walking with the dog every day in front of your door, it can be the refugee from the refugee camp, it can be an orphan, it can be a um, colleague from another route, and give this chocolate to them and tell them the story. Use it for con to connect, right? Because we have more reasons to go forward than the reasons to be afraid of those people. So. Share your chocolate, use it to connect, and raise the borders. Thank you.